So for better or for worse, I think both myself and my husband were born with that delusional gene where you think you can do it all yourself. But guys, this time it worked out. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how my husband and I saved a couple of hundred dollars by putting together this fountain by ourselves. It was surprisingly easy and I'm really glad we did it. I'm really excited to share with you our new fountain. It is the highlight of my garden right now and definitely my place of zen. This video is gonna be all about how we unboxed, built the foundation, moved and installed this fountain here in the garden. In a future video, I am going to share with you how we are going to landscape around this garden. Because if you don't know, hi, my name is Michelle. I garden here in Atlanta, Georgia and share all about what I'm growing, what's growing well, what didn't grow so hot, and all the things that I'm doing to maintain my pretty typical suburban neighborhood garden. So if you're in the Southeast and you love to garden, I hope you hit that subscribe button because this is all I talk about all day long. Let's unbox and set up this fountain. So step one is unboxing. This was delivered by Fright. It was pretty heavy. I think the package said 656 pounds. Um, my daughter, of course, inherited my delusional gene that she can do it all herself. So here she is doing it herself. She let me know that instead she would like to be the camera woman and she would like me to finish unboxing. So if this video is a little shaky, compliments to my eight-year-old. So that's my six-year-old really impressed with the packaging. I am too. Everything is biodegradable except for the exterior plastic that the palette was wrapped in. These are aspen shavings. Kids love it. Dogs love it. And finally, the chickens love it. We're gonna be using this in the run and in the coop as chicken bedding until we finish this pile. One of the things that I feel the most guilty about when ordering things online instead of trying to find them locally is how they're shipped. And when companies are able to figure out how to ship with biodegradable products that can be reused or composted down, I feel so much better about ordering things online. And I'm the type of person that really wants something specific and sometimes that's hard to find locally. So kudos to Campania for shipping with biodegradable materials. I'm so happy about that. Okay, enough about the packaging. Let's talk about how to get the fountain out of the box. So I will preface this by saying that my husband and I actually both have back problems and we were pretty sure that we would need to hire help to help us get the fountain out, get it moved to the final location. I was a little bummed about that because honestly, I don't think people really come out to help for less than a few hundred dollars. And I would rather take those few hundred dollars and add a new bed, add in some new perennials. You guys know me. So this was a test run to see if we could lift it. Spoiler alert, we were able to lift and assemble everything by ourselves. The fountain itself weighs 272 pounds, but every piece is shipped separately. So it's doable if you have two strong-ish people. I wouldn't consider ourselves super strong, but the base is shipped separately from the bowl, which is shipped separately from the fountain cover and the pineapple-shaped finial. So it is doable to assemble and move by yourself. So the next step was moving the fountain to the location and starting to create that foundation. In terms of the fountain, I definitely selected the fountain for this location. I wanted something that wouldn't be too grand and formal, but still had a good mix of traditional and modern. I wanted something that would kind of fit in the space, but not overtake the space. So the Chiswell fountain was something that's been on my wish list for a very, very long time. I feel like it's the perfect balance of modern with the clean lines and traditional with the pineapple detail and the details on the base of the fountain. Also the Chiswell Williamsburg fountain by Campania was the perfect height and width for my space. It stands 36 inches tall and about 30 inches wide, which just perfectly peeks over that azalea hedge. And I'll be able to tuck in compact shrubs around to accentuate its beauty. 
And finally, one of the really great things about this fountain is that a portion of the proceeds are donated back to the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. So anything that is purchased from the Williamsburg brand, which has both indoor decor and things for your garden, like fountains, bird baths, and planters, supports the Williamsburg Foundation, which maintains and operates Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia. It's one of those places that's on my bucket list to take the family. I've heard incredible things about it not just the museums but also the grounds in the garden so to me it's really special that a portion of these proceeds are going to support such a wonderful place I also really like that the fountain is a calm bubbly kind of sound I guess that's the best way to describe it you can't hear this fountain everywhere in the garden but you can hear the fountain where it's most important which is right by our patio so we can hear the fountain sounds as we enjoy a meal and hang out on the back patio and it's also kind of the first thing you hear and see when you walk out of our back door. You can see it from our living room window, which is right here. And you can also see it from our kitchen table, from the kitchen window. So this was where I really wanted a fountain. Is it the most ideal spot? Probably not. We do have a crepe myrtle tree above. I think ideally you would want to place a fountain somewhere where you're not gonna get a lot of tree litter. Crepe myrtles are kind of messy trees. They shed their leaves, they shed their berries, they shed their spent flowers. I went ahead and cut some of the branches away from the fountain so there's no longer any branches directly above the fountain. So for me, this might be a little bit more work. In your garden, if you wanna add a fountain, I'd probably recommend doing it in an open clearing space instead of over a messy tree. Another thing to consider when you're picking your location is how far away your electrical outlet is. So for us, our electrical outlet is just off the patio, so it's very close. The trench that we're going to have to cut in later to hide and bury the electricity isn't going to be very far. So depending on how much digging you want to do, that might also weigh into a consideration when you're picking a location for a fountain in your garden. Now, step one to installation was creating the foundation. Now there are two options for foundation. The first option is you can go and buy a paver stone to put underneath your fountain. Around here, a paver will run you about $10. It probably will not be the perfect size of the base, so you'll have a little bit sticking out, but there's really nothing stopping you from throwing some dirt on top there, planting a couple of shallow rooted perennials and completely disguising that paver. With that option, you do wanna make sure that your paver is completely level before you assemble your fountain or your fountain will be very wonky. We went with option two, which is building a foundation that will perfectly match up to the width of the base. And that way we were also able to hide a little something special to remember this time in our lives. So step one to building the foundation is creating the frame. Because my husband is a big fan of woodworking, we always seem to have spare lumber around. Step one was measuring the base of the fountain and building a frame that had the same inner diameter as the fountain. Then my husband cut some rebar to reinforce the concrete. He says this is required. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure he just likes making sparks fly. Now that the frame was done, it was time to place it and level the frame in place. The concrete is going to self-level, so as long as the frame is level, the concrete pad will be level. Next, my husband added those rebar stakes and some metal wires to reinforce the concrete. And finally, it was time to mix the concrete and pour it in the frame. From there, we leveled off the concrete and then went ahead and brushed the concrete. And then my husband had the idea to personalize it which was just a super special touch. And if you're going through the trouble of pouring your own foundation, why not? The next day we removed the frame and assembled the fountain. And assembling the fountain was easier than assembling any sort of Ikea furniture. It did come with Ikea-esque type instructions, but really it kind of reminded me of stacking giant Lego pieces, giant heavy Lego pieces, but it was just that easy. This was definitely one of those tasks that I thought would be much harder and much more complicated. And then once we finally did it, it was so satisfying and it came together so quickly. I'm embarrassed to admit how long we procrastinated on this. It was a breeze to put together. And I would say as long as you have two strong-ish people putting together the fountain after the foundation was leveled, 
probably took no more than an hour from start to finish. So whenever you add anything to your garden, it is a little bit more work, but I think this work is worth it. And so far, the things that I've had to do is one, I went ahead and purchased mosquito dunks just in case the water isn't completely cycling. And I was worried about this becoming a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Maybe I didn't need to do that, but it gave me peace of mind. Two, I am going to have to purchase some sort of algae stopper. That is going to keep the water clear so that algae doesn't build up. And occasionally I'm going to have to dump out the fountain, clean it out and refill the fountain. Also, I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on the water level and top off the fountain when it gets low so I don't damage the pump. And I'll have to empty and drain the fountain in the winter. So those are the things I'm expecting to do maintenance-wise on a fountain. For me, it was worth it. Of course, with anything in life, you have to decide what's worth it for you in your garden. So if adding a fountain to your garden space has been something that's been on your wish list, but you've been hesitating because you're not sure how much work it is going to be to install and maintain a fountain, I hope this encourages you to go ahead and spring for that fountain. I've absolutely adored having a fountain. It's basically the highlight of my mornings and I really do enjoy coming out and hearing it. And it's just a moment of peace and Zen for me. And as a mom, I need all the little moments of peace and Zen that I can get. I am in the process of thinking through and figuring out which plants to add around the base of the fountain. And when I make those decisions and get those plants, I'll make a follow-up video with that. But as always, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for supporting my channel and I will see you in the next video.